I'm David Fox, Director of Duke Student Orientation and Academic Initiatives. It's my pleasure today to welcome everyone to the Year of Civic Engagement and to the Provost Community Gathering on Zoom. I'd like to thank everybody here for taking their time to be with us and to share your stories with Provost Pr Pritchett and your fellow students. And uh, I also want to remind everybody we are recording this session and we're making it available to the wider Penn community later this month. It will serve as a kind of capstone for the Penn Reading Project and our discussions around civic engagement, which will be a year-long process. I, I am very grateful to you, uh, Wendell Pritchett, our provost, for, uh, taking, for, for taking the lead on this and doing the heavy lifting here. My, my well, pleasure thanks, to David. welcome you. Uh, and and uh, since we're all in Zoom world and used to it, I'll just note that we just got to see your cat, David. I'm glad you have. Oh yes, have we, uh, we we actually have two, uh, Basil and Pemberton. Um, <laughs> Basil is the one who's who's more frequently seen. So uh, we are trying to be informal. I'm going to get to my remarks in a second, and uh, David's choice to rather uh, include this. But you all should know that David and I actually live in the same building. Um, we do. <laughs> So just yet, yet another connection. <laughs> so uh, welcome everyone to this Zoom community gathering. And I'm so pleased you're with us. Uh, it's true we're not in Irvine or auditorium as planned, but I expect we will have an equally robust and illuminating discussion while socially distanced. And I would be remiss if I didn't point out that social physical distancing itself is one important way of supporting our community. Um, so thank you all for being here and for all of your efforts, and I look forward to talking about them. So just very briefly, let me set the stage for our discussion today. I'm sure many of your fellow students are wondering what we mean when we say civic engagement. What are we actually talking about? Is it outreach here in West Philadelphia, working with high school students? Is it doing legal work in the public interest? Does it mean getting out the vote? Is it campaigning for literacy? And you know the answer. It's all of those things. It's all of those things and more. So the term civic engagement is really just shorthand for work that seeks to lift all boats, to battle injustice, to fight for those who may not be heard, and to build a fairer, more equal society. If the last few months have shown us anything, and they've shown us a lot, but one of the things they've shown us is that our country, unique and wonderful in many respects, respects has yet to grapple with our difficult past um, and the inequality that has flowed from it. So engaging with these difficult issues is among the highest callings in civil society, and each of you in your own distinct way has worked to lift us up and to raise consciousness about the power each person has to make a difference. And in fact, you're here because you are very different from one another with different backgrounds and interests, but all with a shared goal of leveraging your pen education to improve the world. Um, so, uh, and by the way, as we'll talk about, um, I have a pen education and I'm also trying to leverage it to improve the world. Um, I'm gonna ask you some specific questions, um, but when you introduce yourselves, I hope you'll touch on what drew you to your specific Penn program, in particular, the Netter Center, Civic Scholars, Box Leadership, Padilla, um, but let's get to it. Um, so I'm gonna start with Katie and ask uh, everybody to give us your name, where you're from, your class, your homeschool, and your major, and then we'll go back around. Hi, um, I'm Katie. I'm a senior. I'm going to be graduating in December, um, following a leave of absence. Um, I'm in bioengineering, which I chose randomly as a freshman, no idea what I was doing. Um, and I, it served me just fine as a place to learn and grow from. Um, I'm from Indiana, West Lafayette, Indiana, originally. And yeah, I'm so glad to be here. Glad Thanks, and Katie. honored. Excellent. Thank you so much. Let's go to see Oscar. Hi everyone, my name is Siaska Yulis. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I am a rising senior in the college, majoring in neuroscience, double minoring in chemistry and healthcare management. I am from Roselle, New Jersey, and I hope to be a physician who really works to attenuate disparities in the future. Wonderful, welcome. Let's go to Luke. Hi, I'm Luke Coleman. Um, I'm a rising junior in the college studying PPE with double minors in Hispanic studies and survey research and data analytics. Um, I'm originally from Dayton, Ohio, but right now I'm in Fort Myers, Florida. It's really hot. Um, I swear all the time. <laughs> I'm really happy to be here. Um, it's an honor. And thank you. Oh, my pronouns are he, him, his. I don't know if I said that earlier, but yes. Excellent. Well, Luke, my uh, college roommate is from Dayton, Ohio, and I spent a whole lot of time there. He's still one of my best friends. It's a great place. Um, Cindy. Hi, everyone. I'm Cindy Reyes. She, her, her. I'm reporting from San Francisco, from the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, I'm studying political science with a minor in urban studies, um, pursuing a dual degree program at SP2 in a master's in social policy. Excellent. Welcome. Let's go to Will. Hey, um, Will. 
I'm originally from Miami, Florida, so totally relate to that Florida heat. Um, but yeah, up in Philly right now. Gradually found my way to the history major, uh, although I tried to avoid it because I think everyone in my family is a history major as well. Excellent. So let's go to Ali. And Ali, would you please introduce yourself? But also, let's start with the first question for you. Um, you know, let's talk a little bit about your civic engagement experience in addition to just introducing yourself. Sure. So my name is Ollie. My pronouns are they, them, theirs. I'm from Southern California. I'm a rising sophomore. And I originally came to Penn as a political science major, but as I began to take classes, I realized that urban studies is where I want to be. I'm also looking at a minor in creative writing. Um, in terms of my involvement at Penn, I'm a civic scholar um, through the Civic House, and I also work as a Silverman Fellow Program Coordinator through the Netter Center for Community Partnerships. And then in my spare time, I volunteer at Motor Pashala, which is a tutoring center for Bangladeshi American students. That's excellent. So let me stick with you for, for a second, Ali. Um, so tell us a little bit about one of those experiences, you know, that's particularly meaningful. Yeah, I think probably one of the most meaningful experiences I've had was through the Silverman Fellowship at the Netter Center. Um, I applied for this job before I got to campus, but it was something that I had been looking for for a long time. In high school, I had been involved in a literacy program that combined my interest with creative writing um, with English literacy. And so I wanted to look for a outlet for that in college as well. So Silverman, the Silverman Fellowship has given me uh, the flexibility to put that program in to give that program a new home in Philadelphia, which I'm really grateful for. All right, so let's go go back to Will. So, uh, Will, I know you're involved in several things, and I do, uh, including like uh, like um, others, uh, Civic House, and you also mentioned being a history major. And I just wanted to mention that um, the founding direct faculty director of Civic House, Walter Licht, who I think you probably met, um, he was actually my dissertation advisor in the history. Oh wow! Um, so, so uh, among the many cool connections. So, tell us about some of your experiences, please. Uh, yeah, so I mean, much like my history major, um, I've really just bounced around Penn, uh, sort of just been fluid, and somehow stumbled into this course uh, called Rhetoric in the Community at the beginning of last year. Um, you had an interview to get in, and it seemed really weird. It was connected to this thing called the SNF Padilla program. And I did a little bit of research, and it was this forming program really dedicated towards educating the whole individual and in civic engagement. And the last time I had heard about civic engagement was all the way back in high school in 2016 when I had actually participated in this voter guide. And I was like, wow, that has, that's been something that I used to be really passionate about, but totally forgot about. And I feel like I'm at a crossroads in my life and I want to re-engage that passion, re reignite it to a certain degree. So I took the class and absolutely loved it, absolutely reconnected with something from my past and sort of tried to get involved with the program. They take in fellows every year, but I'm a little bit too old for that, which is a little bit awkward. Uh, and uh, so that was my involvement with the program was really just reaching out to them and seeing what I could do. Um, and then in terms of other sorts of uh, civic engagement, I'm involved with the Financial Literacy Community Program, which operates out of the Netter Center with uh, Bridges to Wealth. We go into a lot of West Philly and other schools across Philadelphia and really try to bridge what we see as the financial literacy gap, um, just a lot of the unequal education that exists across uh, Philadelphia due to unequal property taxes and education gap itself. Um, and we, we try to help out wherever we see the need. Thank you, Will. And that is uh, among the things you're doing of extremely uh, important program. Um, let's stick with Netter and talk to Siaska for a little while about some of your experiences. Yeah, so on campus, I'm involved with the MOL involved with the Moellis Access Science Pipeline, which stands for Mass Pipeline, and also the Community School, Community School Student Partnerships, which is CSSP. Um, I've been involved with Mass Pipeline since my very first semester here at Penn. It was really important for me to really advocate for more Black students to be a part of STEM, uh, just because I know that as a neuroscience major, and when I came in, there weren't a lot of students who looked like me. And me being Philly, I thought it would be a great opportunity to really spread the knowledge that I was already gaining from the university. So I started off with, you know, teaching neuroscience concepts to students at Sarah High School. And just because I am um, on the pre-med track, I continued doing cardiology, gastroenterology, veterinary, and then again, neuroscience, just because I'm just so passionate, passionate about STEM. And I also was involved with CSSP 
where I was doing after school programming with students. So I was helping students fill out job applications or help them finish up their homework or tutor them in certain, um, in certain things. And this really helped me develop this one-to-one -one relationship with a lot of students, which was really important to me. So they knew that, so they had somebody they could look up to that also looked like them. And to know that, you know, to really mitigate the stereotypes of Penn students and to, for them to be a lot more comfortable with Penn students. That's wonderful. So uh, heads up that I'm gonna go to Luke next, but I wanted to t talk a little bit more, Siaska, with you about your experience. So um, just as a, a little bit of background, uh, both my parents were high school teachers um, and they actually met teaching at West Philadelphia High School. Uh, and so we, we call uh, teaching the family business um, and it just is really rewarding experience and I've learned so much from them and I mean I think there's no question that they are the reason why I decided to become a teacher myself. So I'm interested both in Tiaska and both um, some experiences you've had engaging with students um, and what they how they have contributed to your um, you know, current forecast for your for your future. Let me tell you whatever you forecast now is going to change um, but still interested in what you're currently thinking. Okay, so currently I'm thinking of going to med school after undergrad and you know, becoming a physician. But I think that teaching and also becoming a physician go hand in hand just because education is really the key that links them both. So whether it's, you know, educating people about their health, educating people about um, the steps they need to take in terms of their physical, mental, and um, emotional well-being, it really starts with how to, you know, navigate yourself in the classrooms, really how to understand these concepts that are the underlying reasons for it all. Yeah, yeah. And my relationships with my students really helped me more empathetic and also what it means to really be a person who relates to other people. Because, you know, being a physician doesn't mean that you have all this knowledge in your mind, you're spitting out facts. It's also being able to interact with people, really being able to formulate these relationships with people so that you can understand where they come from and also understand the social determinants of health. That's wonderful. You know, as we think about the current struggle, I mean, we're, we're talking by Zoom and we're having a good conversation. It's, it's We all know it's not the same as meeting in person, but I think it makes it even more important for us to try to engage through Zoom because people really need um, the, the, the connections. You know, um, my, my wife is actually also a teacher. She teaches in, in the Philadelphia Public Schools in South Philly, and she and I, of course, talk every day about this. And, you know, as I think about the, the wonderful um, uh, engagement you're doing with students around, around health, um, you know, I think about the fact that students aren't in class. I'm thinking about K to 12 students now. Students aren't in class every day, but that doesn't mean they're not learning. We're, we're learning a lot right now. <laughs> um, we're, we're learning about public health. We're learning about politics. We're learning about government and what it can and isn't doing well. Uh, we're learning about our responsibilities. Right? We're learning a lot right now. Um, so, so it is great that we're taking advantage of this difficult situation to continue our learning. So Luke, talk, tell us a little bit about your experiences, please. Yeah, for sure. So I started with the Silverman Fellowship, like Ollie, um, last year. So I do the same program in Robeson High School with the Writing Center. I've been doing that since, I want to say, September of 2019. Um, my civic engagement experience with Penn started a little bit later in my Penn experience. Um, I basically went pretty much all of my freshman year without doing much civic engagement. Um, and it led to me feeling kind of guilty in a way, um, enjoying so many compounded privileges being a Penn student. Um, but then like not really interacting with the community at large. So I joined the Silverman Fellowship through that. And then I saw the Penn program on public service internship, which I just completed with Siaska and Katie um, last week. Uh, so we just finished that. I saw that was an option for a summer internship in February of 2020. So I applied for that, had an interview, um, got accepted for the position. And I actually spent six weeks from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. working with five, fifth and sixth grade students um, in like an academic setting, in a virtual classroom, which was really different. Um, you know, working on math skills, English skills, a bunch of other things, um, and also writing an extensive research paper about how to solve a universal problem locally manifested in our communities. So I focused on how we can improve the pen reading initiative to be more culturally responsive um, in the schools that we work in. 
Excellent. That's a really important project. Could you um, uh, give us a little bit more detail about some of your recommendations? And then also, as we've already been talking about, just a little reflection about how you engage with the, stu the students um, and what you learn from it. Mm -hmm. So um, recommendations as like what I mean for the PRI? Yes, exactly. Okay. So that was actually like the entire topic of the PSL that I wrote. Um, so my recommendation was to add an entire new position to the Penn Reading Initiative. Um, which is a training position. So have training um, start at every biweekly meeting, come in for 20 minutes, um, and then train different things. So nonviolent communication, um, ACEs, systemic racism, privileges, oppression, um, things like that of that nature. Also heavily focused on African-American vernacular English and how to give a quality, equitable education to students that don't necessarily look like us. Um, so hopefully I'll be spearheading that in the coming semester. Um, it's still in the works, but I'm really excited about that. Um, in terms of what I've learned from my students, um, it's a hard question because I think I learned so many different yeah. things. Yeah. Um, I think one thing I want to say is that like when you go into these schools, um, and go like out of your, out of the pen bubble, like out of your own experience, you expect in a way to be like teaching your students more than they teach you. And I found that's definitely not the case. Um, I learned so much about like the West Philly community, about how students interact with each other in um, a more like relaxed, like academic setting. And then I also learned more about like the social inequalities that uh, African American people face. Um, and it's definitely really frustrating going in there and having to see like go from Penn, which is like a multi-billion dollar institution and then go into like West Philadelphia schools that are so underfunded and lack just basic necessities that they aren't afforded to simply because I mean I would argue the color of their skin so that was that's very difficult to face that reality every single time you go into a West Philly school or a Philadelphia school. Yeah, and I know you've noticed that lots of people are nodding, including me, and, um, and it really does, it is just disheartening, that that disparity, I agree with you. Um, you the group might be interested to know, I actually served on the Philadelphia School Board for three years, um, and uh, in, in a particularly difficult period where we were doing budget cuts, and just the disparity is just really challenging, and it's something we have to rectify. Um, Cindy, uh, talk to us a little bit about your experiences, please. Yeah, so a lot of my engagement comes from, you know, just being being connected to Civic House. And my relationship to Civic House is um, an interesting one. I think my freshman year, I didn't really dive or jump into a lot of um, programs or activities just because, you know, I was really adapting to, you know, a new setting, being on the other side of the country, um, coming into, you know, an elite institution as a first gen low income student. So kind of adjusting. And I think Civic House was a really welcoming space where I felt like those identities were really affirmed, not only in, you know, the learning environment that they kind of foster there, but also in the community partnerships that um, Civic House really prides itself in of, you know, creating mutually beneficial relationships to other, you know, organizations in the Philadelphia area that are just doing really incredible work. Um, I think... Um, being part of the community engagement internship program at Civic House, um, I'm working or I, this summer and continuing into the academic year, I'll be working with uh, Brendan Rose's Community Fund, which is a super awesome group. Um, please get to know, you know, all the amazing grassroots community led organizations around Philadelphia because they truly are doing some of the most important, you know, mutual aid work, um, just political education, um, community engagement, really at the, the heart of that. Um, uh, what I do at Bread and Roses or what I've been doing this summer is really supporting their um, donor organizing and grant community led grant making and um, fundraising for other um, grassroots organizations in the Philadelphia, um, the greater Philadelphia region. So um, Civic House has just been a place for me to, you know, get connected to these really awesome organizations and also, you know, reflect on my positionality as a Penn student, as a um, somebody coming into Philadelphia as kind of uh, not, not from here, but, you know, taking up space here and what that means. Um, I think Civic House has really um, pushed me to like reflect on that and, and grow. Yeah, it is a wonderful institution. And of course, you all know we have a new wonderful leader, Herman Beavers, faculty leader, and, and he's really excited to be working with the incoming class. And we'll be in, I think he's already engaged with members of the incoming class. So I was going to go to Katie, and I promise I'll get to Katie. Uh, um, but I, since we you brought up bread and roses, I want to go to Jackson because um, so many of the things you've been doing, Jackson, are, are related. Um, and so I bet you want to reinforce some of the things that Cindy just said, but please tell us a little bit about your experience. 
Yeah, that's right. And and just, you know, for everybody, everybody that shared so far, um, I'm, I'm appreciative of your work as a lifelong Philadelphian, um, especially, you know, being engaged to everybody who's watching and unfortunately not able um, to come to campus this semester. Um, uh, appreciative um, that the, the Penn administration made, I think, what is the right decision, uh, even despite the um, the, the delay and, and having to agonize. Um, it Being engaged in, in Philadelphia um, is something that is going to continue to be important and um, arriving here um, in, in 2016. So I, I just graduated in May, studied international relations, but studying the world made me want to focus on um, my city, on, on, on being close to home. And um, exactly as, as many have shared, um, it's so important to um, address, I think, some of the uh, inequality that exists, um, uh, depending on, the, it, it, in, in many ways, it comes down to identity um, uh, locally um, in, in, in the programs and systems that we are active in. Um, and even if we're involved in systems where um, civic engagement isn't immediately a part of the work that is done, uh, incorporating it into um, the work is, is something that is, is going to be, it's going to continue to be necessary um, and, and to speak up about, I'm proud uh, to have been a part of Disney Acapella during my time at Penn, the um, community service acapella group. And uh, we had the opportunity to encourage uh, local Philadelphia public school students, um, as some others on the call have done, maybe through teaching. Um, we would go in and, and sing and, and just share, um, share joy with them and, uh, and brighten up the school day. And um, this attitude of looking to uh, incorporate um, community mindedness into our systems, into our programs, um, is something that I would encourage the incoming class to do. Um, even this semester, as you're wherever you all are, um, thinking about how to, how to be engaged uh, as a result of having to be a part. Thank you, Jackson. Now, I do want to go to Katie, but I just had to insert as a proud father, um, I have two daughters. One graduated, uh, Jackson knows her, and the younger one um, is a rising junior at Brown. Um, and Jackson knows this, but she's also in Disney Acapella at Brown. Uh, and um, that's among the, among the things that she does there uh, to engage in. And I think Jackson is exactly right. There are just a million ways to engage. There really is nothing that you could do at Penn that isn't connected to trying to make the world better and to help people people uh, by improving equity and, and healing injustice. There is really nothing uh, that's disconnected from that. Um, and so I think sometimes people struggle to think, well, in my major, how do I connect it to it? And actually, Katie's going to talk about this, I think. Um, everything is connected, right, Katie? Absolutely. Everything is totally connected. Um, I want to echo what Luke said about not getting involved in community engagement um, until later on in my pen career. And I think that was largely because I didn't think there was like a place for me to engage or I didn't see like how it necessarily fit into the linear idea I had of what I was going to do at Penn and like beyond. Um, but luckily for me, I had a family crisis uh, during my sophomore year, which caused me to take a leave of absence. And during that leave of absence, one of the cool opportunities I had was to just like hit pause and say, who am I now? Like, who do I want to become? What am I doing at Penn? And how does that speak to what I think is important? Like where you spend your time is ultimately the biggest you know, reflection of your values and your morals. And during that pause, I got involved with the Netter Center. Um, and I think that was like the single most important thing I did at Penn. Um, I think being involved with the Netter Center and with, as part of that, the broader Philadelphia community is like what made Penn feel like home to me. Um, and coming back from that leave, I was so much more integrated in my community and proud of what I was doing and that, really, really had positive benefits, both um, in my work and how motivated I was in sort of my West Philly stuff, but also in my time at Penn and in my major. Um, I think one of the most important things that I've taken away is that no matter what you're passionate about, no matter what you do, um, there are ways to make that community minded. And there are really important ways that 
that passion carries over. It doesn't necessarily, you don't have to be, you know, doing the things that people stereotypically think of, like maybe voting rights drives, if that's not what you're passionate about. Maybe you're into architecture, maybe you're in, you know, nursing, like whatever you do, there's a place for you um, in the civic engagement community. Um, and it takes all types of people. Thank, thank you, Katie. That was really said beautifully. And I just want to repeat what you said. It's just that, um, you know, what we are trying to do at Penn um, is help produce meaningful experiences that um, contribute to your journey uh, throughout your lives. Um, and a big part of what we do is really what Katie said is, is helping students integrate what they're doing. Um, and what happens in class is important and studying outside of class is important and social engagements are important. Um, and But they're only part of the experience. And without being engaged in the world, none of those things are really that meaningful. Um, and, you know, I think it takes a while to figure out how to engage with the world in the productive ways. I let me tell you, I'm 56 and I'm still trying to figure out what are the uh, most productive ways to engage in the world. But but that, that journey of being engaged in the world is crucial to having a meaningful life. Um, and and I, I see people nodding, and, I, and I, I'm proud that I think that people learn that at Penn. You come to Penn knowing that, but I think we, I, I hope that we can help reinforce it and again, um, move you along on your journey. So um, we're a little bit more than halfway through this conversation, and I want to dig a little bit more deeply into your experiences, what's been meaningful, what's been challenging. And I just want to give a heads up that the last two things I want to talk about are um, advice for students in two different ways. One, uh, in the Zoom world that we're in, um, how, how do we engage? Um, and then two, you know, just as they come in, uh, first years, as they come into their pen experience, what, what advice do you have for them? And it doesn't necessarily have to be all about engagement. It's just to go, whatever advice you have, um, as, uh, if you wanted to write a letter back to your freshman self, first year self, what, what would you say? Um, so those are things we'll get to in a minute. Um, but, but now I'm going to actually open it up for anybody who wants to share some thoughts. Again, kind of follow up things that you didn't get to or things that this conversation um, is presenting to you, you know, again, about what's been meaningful in your experiences and what are some challenges that we see. And, and of course, uh, so many of you are involved in public education. I know we'll spend some more time talking about that because it's so important. So who'd like to, to uh, you know, jump in? I'm, I'm happy to, to follow up on something that Jackson said. I think that was really important, uh, that kind of narrowing down from international relations, like the study of the world and really narrowing it down, funneling it down to the study of the community and, and hammering it down and, and having civic engagement in the community. I think that there's like, there's almost an aloofness at Penn that exists sometimes that I've struggled with. And I know that I, at least people I know have struggled with as well. And until I found a civic engagement or at least a, an activity that, that really brought me closer to engaging with the community and allowed me to to get active with Philadelphia or even the broader college community. Um, I didn't feel like it was almost like a home environment. And I think that that, that locality and, and knowing yourself to a local degree and where you inhabit is, is super important. Yeah. Thank you for adding that. Will. We'd like to talk a little bit more about K-12 education, the reading project, you know, other, other activities that are meaningful. I just know so many of you, all of you are involved in some way in that project. Some of you have made it your main focus, but all of you are involved. I'm just really interested in, in your thoughts. It is such an obvious way, though, again, not the only one. Katie is exactly right, um, but it's, it is an obvious way to be involved. I can Jessica, jump in a please. little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, for one, K-12 education, as we know, is very important um, as it is one of the stepping stones in where you're headed and where you're directed in life. So for me, um, being able to volunteer in West Philadelphia high schools, I know that my work is really important because what I'm doing is the students are in this um, stage in their life where they're trying to figure out what they want to do. They're being influenced, by, if not by um, their peers, but outside influences and their professors and things like that. So it's really important to make a good impression on them. So one of the positive things about working with K-12 students is they are very impressionable and they are very eager. They are, they're like sponges, you know, they want to take in all the information that you're sharing with them. But um, as Luke had mentioned earlier, uh, some of the difficulties navigating that is knowing who you are as a Penn student and knowing that there has been a history of 
a difficult relationship between the West Philadelphia community and the University of Pennsylvania? And what does that mean when you are entering their schools? What does that mean when you are in their space? And being mindful that sometimes, no matter what your goal is for that day, it may not come to fruition just because a lot of students are very hesitant. A lot of students, they have this preconceived notion of um, what University of Pennsylvania students are like. So it's seeing that and also managing, you know, the different resources that they have. You know, sometimes when I remember when I would go in, I had an ABCS course for BBB 160. And, you know, we're trying to show these students different pictures of organelles. And, you know, that particular high school didn't have colored ink. So how can you really um, point out, oh, this is what the mitochondria Chondria is, this is a chloroplast, when you can't really differentiate the two without colors. So it's always hard to navigate things like that, but I do feel fortunate that even though if I had like 10 things to do and only got through like two of those things, that I am making an impact. And where I come from, you know, my family always says, you know, it takes a village. So it was always important for me to go back no matter what school I went to, no matter what town I was in, what city I was in, to really make an impact because no matter what, you can always need, you always need help. No matter who you are, what stage of life you're in, help isn't going to harm you. It can only help you in the future, so. Yeah, no, I really think I appreciate you sharing that. Um, I, I want to uh, uh, pivot to, to Ali for a second and thinking about policy because you've been involved in so many policy things. But, you know, I really, uh, again, re reflect, as Siaska just said, uh, as we approach this work, we have to do it with humility particularly, but also generosity um, and, and the understanding that we have to engage people where they are and what and understand, understand what, what they, their aspirations are. Quick, um, very quick story, Mike. I mentioned my parents met at West Philadelphia High School. My mom actually lived in West Philadelphia High School as a kid um, near the Penn campus. Um, and so, uh, you know, my, my family history is a complex uh, engaging with, with Penn. Um, and it is just factually true that Penn is a, has a complex some problematic history in, in engaging with West Philadelphia and, and, and people of color. And, and I've said frequently as provost, I think we should acknowledge that and move forward to be better. And what I appreciate in being provost is that Penn is a place that wants to get better. And, and I feel privileged to be uh, helping us on that journey. But we also, again, need to go with humility and understand that we are a flawed institution and need to get better. Um, so, uh, Ali, I, I, I want to welcome you to share anything, but I, but, you know, as a Potential future lawyer, I wonder, um, since you've worked in so many legal aid organizations, how uh, you and some of your experiences might lead into some of the policy changes that I think are also necessary to create a, a more just society. Absolutely. I was actually just going to chime in, so I'm so glad that you punted it to me. Um, I wanted to build off of something that I think Luke mentioned before and then Chiaska just said. Um, it, this might be counterintuitive to talk about on a panel that's highlighting, you know, student leaders in the Penn community, but I want to talk about what it looks like to decenter ourselves in social justice as students from a privileged institution like Penn. I feel like I've had the unfortunate experience my first year of encountering students who get into social justice or civic engagement to build off their resumes or to put something on their LinkedIn or to leverage themselves into a fellowship. And I want to talk about what it means to build bridges out of our volunteerism instead of ladders for ourselves. And one policy measure that I think that Penn can be doing better is paying pilots. So, you know, as students, um, you know, a lot of our initiatives that we're involved with, Padilla, Civic House, Civic Scholars, uh, Netter Center, all these initiatives were used to justify why Penn shouldn't be paying pilots, why our engagement is enough for these communities that, you know, they don't have to, you know, uh, provide material support. And as students who are in these institutions, I think it's our responsibility to say no, like we've been in these communities, we've interacted with these people, like what we're doing, it is good, it's a short term solution, but it's not enough. We need to take a stand to rectify systemic oppression, long term issues. And I think that's the responsibility of all of us and everyone who's involved with Civic House, Netter Center, Padilla. Thank you for sharing that. And I, I, as you all know, we are having a robust conversation at the university about the question that you raised about what's Penn's responsibility to the city and beyond. Um, and I completely agree that students should be very active in that conversation. I appreciate the way that you framed it, Ali. Yeah, 
Um, other thoughts on that question, other, other ones, I do want to pivot in a couple of minutes to uh, direct advice for our first uh, year students and how they can both um, enter successfully in this very difficult situation and um, also think about what their career at Penn and beyond is going to look like. Um, yeah, I think a lot of us touched on that piece about um, humility, but uh, I think something that's worthwhile to come into um, the Penn space kind of thinking about is, you know, in the, we come into, you know, this institution wanting to learn, wanting to, you know, create knowledge too. Um, I think part of, you know, the university and the experience of that is, you know, you're not just learning from your professors, you're also learning if you get an opportunity, you're learning from community leaders, from members of, you know, your neighborhood that you might um, not really get a chance to see or interact with often and I think knowing and acknowledging that you know they have a piece in that creation of knowledge and it's all valid and it's all you know part of you know it should be part of academia and it should be part of you know what we're integrating as we create you know as we do research as we do you know as we create um we look at different ways you know to to inform policy and stuff like that I think it's really important to you know walk in with humility to um, retain that and maintain that and really act with that. Thank you, Cindy. So, um, Cindy, since you're already unmuted, um, any advice you have for first years? I mean, you just gave some wonderful advice. I just want to give you an opportunity to, to add anything else as we start to wind down. Yeah, I mean, um, just being able to create a home at Penn, whatever that means to you, whether that means um, finding people, finding your people who, you know, have similar experiences to you, who want to pursue the same avenues of community engagement that you do. Um, it's all worthwhile really creating those relationships because I think civic engagement looks like very different things, but it always looks like, you know, building actual connection, genuine, authentic, you know, relationships with people um i think that's really at the core of you know why we're here thank you so i want to go to, to jackson and jackson i'm hoping that in addition to giving any advice as the old head on this this call um you could share a little bit more about what you're doing now and what what led to it um because you are a wonderful example of you know what happens after graduation thank you thank you mr provost i um i appreciate that i owe it to, to the Fox Leadership Program at Penn um, to have gotten connected now. So, and this, this is related to my advice. Um, uh, I was, so through the Fox Leadership Program, I've been working this summer uh, as the SNAP hotline uh, counselor. SNAP is the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program um, that people uh, who have a shortage uh, in their budgets for buying nutritious food, um, for buying food, um, use uh, in order to, to purchase food for them and their families. Um, and so at the coalition, you know, I've been helping people answer the phone uh, and put in the information of Philadelphians who are calling to look to get signed up um, for this government program. Um, and so that, that was a connection uh, that I was given and, and that has been paid for, you know, my time um, with the coalition has been paid for by the Fox Leadership Program. So I'm grateful to them for that. My advice uh, to the incoming class is um, related to what Siaska talked about in terms of staying involved um, and related to what Ali talked about in terms of um, making sure that we speak up and speak out is um, we have to remain involved uh, in the communities that we've been a part of, I think, uh, after we've been a part of them even when we disagree. Um, uh, and the reason is because we have a unique perspective in those communities um, to speak to the experiences of those who are now involved in them. Um, and so one thing that the Fox Leadership Program opened up for me is a connection to Mighty Writers, uh, which is a nonprofit here in West Philly, actually across the city of Philly, maybe across the country now. Um, and I am getting involved in the mentorship program. Uh, they have a shortage of male mentors um, here. Uh, and so when you all get back to campus for the incoming guys, uh, something to think about. Um, yeah, and, and, and that was something that was opened up. You know, the introduction happened um, through the coalition, through the Fox Leadership Program. And so um, never knowing 
when a connection could come from keeping the door open to communities we've been involved in in the past um, and to holding them accountable. Thank you, uh, Jackson. As I go to Luke, um, I got to tell uh, Jackson and all of you that my wife will be very proud to hear you saying uh, that you're involved in Mighty Writers because she's actually on the board of directors. Um, and it is a wonderful program. Um, and while I don't like to favor among the wonderful programs that we have in Philadelphia, it is a particularly good one. Um, so if people are interested in it, I would urge you to look it up. Luke. Um, yeah, so I guess I have three pieces of advice um, that are really specific to incoming students, but I guess specific to like the fan community in general. So one thing I definitely wanna highlight is that in my first year specifically, in my second semester of my freshman year, I had like a really rough time with my mental health, um, taking care of myself. I think many Penn students can also attest to that and being sort of isolated in your own communities and how to deal with the intense competition that Penn invites and often supports in the academic experience. Um, so I wanna say like, first of all, you have a bunch of different resources at Penn that may not always be evident to you, but they are there. Um, there's CAPS, please use it. I know you're probably gonna hear this until your ears bleed, but it is really important to take care of yourself at Penn, um, especially being like, as a black man, sometimes it's very hard to walk down the like down locust walk and see no one that looks like you and it's really hard but it is okay you're going to be fine um just remember that you always have friends you can reach out um my second piece of advice totally goes hand in hand with that and taking care of yourself is that we also have a responsibility to take to take care of those around us that we interact with so that is the west philly community that is the pen community um we can use civic engagement to make those bonds stronger to make ourselves stronger the emotional and mental state of each other stronger. Um, and then lastly is that Penn also has a lot of academic opportunities. I mean, tons of academic and extracurricular act opportunities that you can use to not only increase your own academic experience and learning, um, but to really just like actually make the world a better place. Um, a quick little like anecdote. So I went to Turkey with the Penn Global Seminar in January of 2020 before everything like crazy happened. Um, so there I was able to talk with Syrian refugees and um, go to refugee camps and just see a bunch of different, not a refugee camp, but like a refugee detention center. Uh, it was really very harrowing experience, but I really like sobering experience as well to um, be able to leverage all the different things I learned as a PPE major um, and connect them all and to see an actual crisis that's going on with real people and like a real problem and how I can contribute and help maybe not at a huge global level, but starting small in my own community and making Philly a more equitable place and Penn a more equitable place. So yeah, big takeaway, mental health, engagement, opportunities, <laughs> and have a great year. That's right. that, that was wonderful, Luke. I'm gonna to go to Katie in a second, but if I could just uh, add a personal reflection to the wonderful uh, remarks you just made. So um, yes, people should ask for help. Everybody needs help. I ask for help literally every single hour. Um, and we can never repeat enough that we want everybody in this class and everybody in the Penn community to ask for help and we will provide it. Um, and I appreciate Luke, you uh, specifically um, calling out um, CAPS um, because it is a resource that is available. Um, I, I, I of course then thought about our uh, chief wellness officer, Benoit Dubé. And one of the things he frequently talks about is the state of flow. Um, and it's a thing that you might look up. It's actually kind of came out of our positive psychology um, uh, department, which is world class. And, and the, the point of it is a feeling that you're in a positive direction. Um, and, and we all experience that. There are just times when, you know, we feel like things are, are going well and things are going uh, uh, positively and we're just feeling engaged. And even though we over, I'm overusing that word. Um, and, you know, I just want to say that there are lots of ways to be in flow. One of them is in class, but it's not the only one. And in fact, I think most people find that if you're just doing well in class and not doing other things, that's not satisfactory. And the last thing I want to say, and, 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 and Luke really um, framed this for me so personally, so I want the incoming class to know, in my first semester in college, I got two C's and two B's. And I'm the provost of, the, of an Ivy League institution, right? Um, grades matter. Yeah, I understand that matter, but they are such a small part of the experience. And I want everybody to um, just, and I see my uh, colleagues on the, on the Zoom call nodding. Um, 
there, there are a lot of important things in life. Um, I got two B's and two C's and I think that, you know, my college career turned out okay. Um, so, uh, Katie, sorry for getting a little emotional, but I, I want to invite you to share some thoughts. No, you're absolutely fine. Um, I just wanted to add that I, in the capstone paper I just submitted for the Penn Program for Public Service, I mentioned Mighty Writers at length. Um, so it's fun <laughs> to get it brought up uh, in this setting. But um, like Luke, I also sort of had three things that I wanted to share with all the freshmen out there. The first is this idea of a wellness wheel, um, which is the SAMHSA wellness wheel that sort of CAPS uses. And that idea is that you have so many dimensions of wellness. You have mental wellness, you have physical wellness, you have financial wellness, um, you have, you know, academic wellness, and all of those things contribute to how you're doing. And so make sure to find balance in your freshman year. You can't be spending all of your time on your academics. You can't be spending all of your time on your social stuff. You can't be spending all of your time, you know, like working out, pursuing physical health. Like it's really, really important to make sure all the different sectors of yourself, spiritual, you know, occupational, they're all nurtured. Um, and Penn can, Penn can have really unidirectional, like, you know, like sort of, you can be forced to like think academics are the only thing that matters, but your, your overall wellness is so much more broad than that. So I printed out that wellness wheel and had it on my bulletin mm -hmm. board freshman year, just to remind me to like, get outside, go for walks, like do all the things in all the different sectors of you, all the different dimensions of yourself, because that stuff really matters. Um, and ultimately, you have to put on your own oxygen mask before you can care for the world. So um, to be a civic, you know, to be to engage with your community, you need to be doing well. So take care of yourself, especially now, especially in this crazy time. That was the first one. The second one is um, I wanted to touch on what Siaska and Ali had said about building constructive relationships and building bridges, not ladders. And it can be really scary. Like, it can feel like everything you're doing is wrong. But um, so I just wanted to offer one tip or one guiding principle that I use to make sure that I'm pursuing constructive relationships, and that is to base your service in listening. Penn can teach us that um, we are all leaders and we all need to be leaders, and the only thing that matters is leadership, but I think there's actually an immense amount of value in adding to things that are already existing. One of the things I've learned about West Philadelphia is that it already has such incredible leaders who have been there for decades before I arrived and will be there for decades after, you know, I eventually leave. And adding to their missions, meeting them, saying, what do you need? Like, what can I help with is, I think, one way that you can be constructive. So, like, soak it in, listen and write and read and process in pen spaces. Like, do all of that work um, as sort of a prerequisite to even thinking about like what you would change or like what you would, you know, like, you know, create, um, because ultimately it's that listening and learning from them and from their experiences that should guide our work. Um, and then the third thing I wanted to say was don't, don't pursue your five-year plan. Like you can create a narrative retroactively, just follow the things that you're passionate about and they will all add up to something meaningful. That's, I think a better way to go about it than to say, I need X, Y, and Z, and that will create success. No, follow, like, do the things you want to do, do the things that you think create value sets and find your moral center, find what motivates you. Those are the skills that you need for any occupation after Penn, not, you know, a specific, you know, like skill set on biochemistry. You need to know who you are as a person, and that will take you much further than pursuing any one experience that you feel like you should have. So, do the things that you want to do, do the things that, you know, wake you up every morning excited um, and not the things that are prescribed to you um, from someone else, if that makes sense. And I believe in you guys so much and I'm excited to see what you all do in the future. Katie, that was wonderful. I want to go to Will and then close with Siaska. And I just want to, uh, again, reflect something that you said. You said so many wonderful things. But one of the things I frequently say to students is that um, a phrase of, uh, of uh, one of my favorite phrases is people plan and God laughs. Um, and that doesn't mean that we shouldn't develop plans. But as you just said, we need to recognize that, you know, the life takes us in, in interesting directions and you should go with it. Um, and if, and in my view, and I'm really just repeating the uh, beautiful things that you said, in, in terms of how do you connect, it, is it an interesting uh, activity with people that I respect? Um, and if those two categories, criteria are met, then, you know, the rest of it's really just less important. Um, so, Will, and then we'll finish with Siaska. 
Yeah, no, I, I think those are great points. I think that um, if I had known that in the beginning of Penn, just that in the long run, everything will be okay. It would have saved me so much rest and so much worry and concern, uh, just knowing that despite what it seems like, everything will be okay. Uh, two Bs and a C was way better grades than I actually got my first semester, so props to you. Uh, but yeah, no, like that's my first piece of advice. Everything will be okay. Second piece of advice is that Zoom is a good substitute, uh, but yeah, like there's going to be a lot of awkward silences, and it's not the perfect substitute for uh, conversation. So I've made a lot of mistakes, but one thing I think that I've always managed to do well, for better or for worse, is I expose my ideas. Uh, and that allows, or that opens me up to criticism. And from there, I can evaluate them and then evolve. And I think that at Penn, sometimes there's a little bit of a, a resistance towards that. But people need to realize that in the Zoom world, we can't expose ourselves to, to one another physically. So we have to expose our ideas out there, then evaluate those ideas, realize that they can change and then evolve. Um, and then final piece of advice is we have to burst our bubbles. Uh, we always talk about pen bubbles at Penn. Um, I'm not sure what those bubbles are, if they're the, the like bubble before 42nd street, or if it's like the bubbles internally in like social communities, I don't know, but whatever it is, take a random class, join a random club, get coffee with a random person. Yeah. I always try to do just random things, mix it up every now and then. And it's just, it's fun. It gives you to a, a new perspective, diverse perspectives. Um, and it's just a, a unique way to, sorry to, to use the word, uh, engage with the pen community. Great, great. Thank you, Will. And actually, I want to go to, to Ali and then Siaska, um, because I apologize, Ali. I didn't give you a chance to, to um, uh, answer this question, but I just also want to reiterate, I got two C's and two B's, just in case everybody, in case I wasn't clear. Ali. <laughs> Yeah, I want to echo um, something that Katie has already touched on, but my first piece of advice I would say is to get off Penn's campus. You know, I remember arriving on Penn's campus and thinking about social issues that I was passionate about and feeling so alone, but you are not alone. There are people, like Katie said, who have been in the community and doing this work for decades. You know, listen to them, be in community with them. I've learned so much from my students at Motor Pachala and Robeson High School, and they are brilliant. And they've allowed me to engage with and imply the knowledge in my classes in new and really exciting ways. And I think my second piece of advice is something that we say in the performance poetry commu community, and it's get free. And I think that college is such an exciting opportunity to explore your identity, to question your beliefs, and it's an opportunity to rise out of fear or insecurity. And I just really want people to pursue freedom um, in college as much as they can. Thank you, Ali. And now we'll go to Siaska. One thing I really, really want to emphasize um, of Vice Mr. Pritchett and Luke and William also uh, touched on is to ask for help just because, you know, we, as students who are leaving the university, you're most likely the top students of your university and you're so used to people coming to you for help and you're the one who's always, you know, helping others, tutoring others and things of that nature. But when you come to the University of Pennsylvania, everyone is just as smart, if not smarter than you. So it's really important to really ask for help, really taking advantage of the resources that are there, that are available to you, even though it may not seem like no one is, you know, in the same boat as you, you know, there's something called pen face where it just seems like everyone is completely fine. Everyone is doing great, but deep down inside, everyone is struggling in their own way and for some other reason, unknown reason. Uh, another thing I wanted to recommend was ABCS courses, just because um, even though you might not know how to get started in terms of civic engagement, which programs to really start with at the Netter Center, but there are courses that you can take for credit, which will allow you to not only be involved with the local community schools, but also learn in the Penn setting, if that's what you prefer. And I think it's really a great way to put, you know, your toe in the water to really see what it's like to interact with students, high school students in the surrounding area. And last but not least, I want to share a little bit why I did civic engagement, just because I feel as though it was the best way and is actually has been the most 
influential part of my pen career just because I have learned so much that I would not have been able to learn in my STEM classes. You would think that, you know, I would be able to solve any problem from doing, you know, chemistry, organic chemistry, things like that. But I feel like I have gotten all my people skills, all of my problem solving skills, and really how to communicate um, just by interacting with the local community. And one thing I will always be appreciative of was this past program, when I, this past summer when I did the PPS program, where I was able to find a problem and then find a way to really articulate how to solve that problem through a 100-page paper. But it was an opportunity for me to really say, okay, yes, Penn is such a great university. Yes, I have been afforded all of these privileges, but of course, like you said, um, Vice President, Provost, Mr. Pritchett, uh, just like you said that there are some faults that the university has and it is our job to really come together and figure out, okay, what can I do with all my knowledge and how can I make the surrounding community better? Thank you, Siaska. So thank you, Siaska, thank you, Cindy, thank you, Ollie, thank you, Jackson, thank you, Luke, thank you, Will, thank you, Katie. Um, I just want to express a lot of gratitude to you for your community ship, for your colleague ship. Katie, notice I did not say leadership. Um, I, I want to thank you for being wonderful community members and for spending some time with us today. Um, and uh, we will get back to in-person experiences, um, and it will be soon. Um, and we're going to have an even more wonderful experience then. But in the meantime, we can have a meaningful college uh, career uh, uh, starting uh, in this way uh, through mostly Zoom and other kinds of um, online uh, interactions. It will still be very meaningful. And, and I just I appreciate all of you showing us the way um, towards a uh, meaningful print career. David, what did we oh, miss? What else should we cover? Yeah. I don't think you missed anything. I was, I've been sitting here reading okay. messages coming off on my phone about how extraordinarily eloquent and uh, awesome you all are. And uh, I think I, that's certainly my takeaway too. Um, um, to the extent that I can close this out, one thing I'll say is that you are likely watching this at, the, at what will be the end of the pen reading project, but that is just the beginning of the year of civic engagement, which is of course just the beginning of your pen careers. So this is a this is a this is the long run, not the short run, and uh, I'm I'm so grateful that you had that you have so many enthusiastic voices here welcoming you. Um, there will be lots of opportunities this semester for uh, for first years. Um, uh, we look forward to serving you, to getting to know you better through Zoom and other tools, and. Uh, and at some point in the not too distant future, I look forward to meeting you on Locust Walk. But until then, on our beautiful Penn campus, but until then, welcome to Penn. And thanks everybody. Thanks everybody, I really do appreciate yeah. it. These are just unprecedented times and you know, uh, just joining together as much as we can is really important. So uh, you, you made my afternoon, thanks so thank you.